It's Red Eye Radio. Gary McNamara and Eric Harley talk about everything from politics to social issues and news of the day. Whether you're up late or you're just starting your day, welcome to the show from the Uniden America Studios. This is Red Eye Radio. Hello and welcome. He is Gary McNamara. I'm Eric Harley. As we move into a Monday, caution. Just a notification for our audience. Some of our intelligence may be artificial. Gary? Oh, man. We'll get How to, are you? We'll get to some of those things. For me. It was actually, it's actually funny. Mm-hmm. It's so bizarre, it's funny. We'll get to that coming up here in a little bit. And we're not just talking about the uh, the uh, recreations of people, for example. Right, when, right For right. example, what, last week when somebody put in uh, to uh, uh, the uh, the AI, artificial intelligence, um, uh, to you know, uh, you know, give us pictures of the Pope. Yeah. Now every Pope has been white. There wasn't one any of the depictions. The Pope was not white, and and uh, and it got worse because then they said, okay, we're going to stop that. Then they Elon Musk Elon Musk talked to somebody there and said um, and said uh, you know you need to correct this. Oh, we're gonna we're temporarily going to take that down and we're going to correct it, and then. As we have stated, yeah, but you got another. You have a bigger problem. That's when you put something into AI. Yeah, you know the yeah. the explanation that you get. So I don't know if if Elon Musk did it or somebody else did it, but there was a question that was asked. You know, who was more dangerous to the world, Hitler or Elon Musk? It was. Well, you have to look at this, uh, you know, in context. Both have done damage. Oh, we'll get to the specifics of it, but it was hilarious. It was like, yeah. okay, we're going to, you know, there are bad things that both these people have done, and you're going to have to make that decision whether Hitler was worse than Elon Musk. This is the insanity. This is garbage in, garbage out. You can call it artificial intelligence, but this is an artificial intelligence that is, this, this is not, where artificial intelligence thinks for itself. This is garbage in, garbage out. This is what's right. being inputted by the people at Google. I'm okay with machines starting to learn how to think for themselves as long as they think like Thomas Sowell. <laughs> exactly right. You know, if, if we're talking that, then I'm like, oh, bring it on. You know, if if, if uh, you know if they can um, if they can line it out like economics. Milton Friedman style, just boom, the computer just lays it out. Because the difference is, is that, I don't know, for how long? You know, when I first came to this show, the old version of this show, at our flagship WBAP, we had one computer with internet in in the building. And by the way, still today, in this building, we have pretty much just one computer where the internet works you know, reliably. <laughs> That's not far off. <laughs> not not Sad, far off. <laughs> sadly enough, twenty seven years later. And the and the search engine uh, uh, uh to go to was Hotbot. Remember that? Oh yeah. Is it still around? I, yeah. I haven't even looked. I gotta Google that. <laughs> Let me Google to see if no. Hotbot is still around. Hotbot like like B O T? Well yeah. Well it was. I, well, it's still around because uh, I I get all of these uh, friends on Instagram, all these that must be lovely looking ladies well, who no, follow you. They're and... not. We discussed this a couple of weeks ago. Mm-hmm. What about, that they're not lovely. Well, they seem to for some reason the bots seem to believe that men because I'm assuming that's who they're attempting to get attracted. You know. To, to that yeah and 110 percent of their followers are men <laughs> yes exactly and that's no exaggeration at all why because some men try to like them twice open exactly. up a different they account have, they have two or three accounts yes and and the one thing that i started uh, I, and i asked it a couple of weeks ago on the radio i said when is it that the bots whoever the bots are mm-hmm. men or women yeah. decided that men like uh, um, posterior lobes mm-hmm. that are the size of Texas. 
Mm. Yeah. I don't when, think I'm when, getting many of those, but yeah, but there, but there are some others. Oh no, <laughs> other on, features on, on, on Instagram. I mean, yeah. I the, I've never posted on Instagram. The only yeah. reason I'm on there is because my great nephew posts basketball stuff, right. but I've never, right. and so I just I probably get three or four a day, and I'm just yeah. like stop it, yeah. stop it, yeah. This I is, uh, I was able to slow it down. It's like it's not even attractive. Yeah. Stop it! I'm I'm now only getting, and I only log on like once a month, you know, because I don't ever have many pictures to share, like vacation or if I go to a trucking show and see some cool trucks, I love to share those pictures. Otherwise, I really don't have anything to share on Instagram. I'm not going to do reels. The thing is, is it was it it became about reels, and 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 that wasn't for me. So. But logging on once a month, I logged on the other day. I can't remember why. I think my sister said she saw something on Instagram and shared it or something. And I logged on and I don't have as many bots, near as many bots. Uh, X, the old Twitter stomping grounds, went crazy for a while where I would log on and I knew I had so many notifications. I knew it was all bots. I oh, knew. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, okay, that's not a normal thing. There are days when you have heavier notification, uh, mm-hmm. but there, it, this just, this was just insane. And yeah, the, 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 it goes beyond AI. It goes beyond, you know, when you, when you think about this whole thing with AI, it, it goes beyond indoctrination because Going back to the beginning of all this, back when we had one computer in the building, and you look at the way people started to rely more and more on that information. You know, you'll see it, and people will be having a conversation, and then you see them start to fact check, right? Somebody inevitably in that conversation looks at their phone and starts to Google it. You know, who was, who was the uh, governor of uh, South Dakota? Oh, and then boom. Someone starts to look it up. And so we rely on that information. And a lot of it is good information. It's accurate information. The problem is when you start mucking it up with a bunch of um, uh, DEI type, woke type mentality that also is very much at play in the postings uh, and so-called facts or maybe coverage of facts you mean lies yeah okay and all of that culminates in what the the ai finds the ai AI is just going out right now rounding up whatever's out there if it's if it's mostly crap it's going to be crap coming in as you mentioned it's crap in crap out and those are the problems that with as with as vast as the internet is AI, if it doesn't change, and I bring up Thomas Sowell, you know, and Milton Friedman and, you know, people that that we follow, thoughtful individuals who, who, you know, over the years have, who have issued thoughtful uh, opinions and observations. Well, if you don't get to that point, then all of a sudden, nobody's going to trust the AI and it's over. It will burn itself out almost immediately It's already being mocked. And, you know, the AI stocks, the companies, you know, where it's just booming. NVIDIA, all these companies where it's just exploding could be one of two things. It could be indicative of, you know, okay, a real solid growth in in that marketplace, which means it would be ultimately a true reliance on that kind of artificial intelligence if it's done right or it could be a bubble much like the tech bubble of the 90s that we saw and those are the things you you look at and say all right what are we going to trust because the the good thing about it is is we have pretty good as humans most of us mm, many of us have pretty good bs detectors and we can look at it and say, okay, that's that's garbage. The whole thing with the Pope was very clear. That was blatantly clear. 
and it was mocked endlessly. But I think it's a good example of the trouble with AI. I, well, I don't I, think, I think you're going to. No, I think it's the trouble with the people that work at Google. Well, no, that's that's the whole point. That's the input. Right. That's it's the input, though. Mm-hmm. The, the the concept of AI, AI is simply a, you know, technological tool. Mm-hmm. And that's so it's, it's well, what but it's, it's what the human beings put but into it. The it's, tool requires that in, that data input by, by those right. humans. And that's the whole point is until you fix that input, AI is going to be nothing. It's going to be mocked. It's going to be endless. That, and that's where it is. I mean, it's a. It's to the point where it's just hilarious. You read it and you're just like, but the fact is, it, and and I don't know what's going to happen in this case. Uh, I know that one of the things that came out was, you know, Google saying we're going to fix it. No, you're not because you're the problem. Right. Right. It goes, it goes back to liberalism to begin with. They caused the problem. And then the same people that have told you what their ideology is and mm-hmm. what they wish to do pretend that they're going to fix something. Right. That they created, that they screwed up. Yeah. So, I mean, but I think a lot of people think that there's this artificial intelligence out there that, you know, that that uh, what you're dealing with here is basically the human is out of it. And it's the artificial intelligence that can think on its own to tell you about history. And that's not what's going on. No, no, it's not. And and if people want to be willfully ignorant. And not do their their fact checking, you know that's where they will remain. They'll be ignorant. That that won't change. But I suspect if the companies, this is what this is what sets everything in line. Capitalism. What I fear is the government using AI and weaponizing AI through departments. You know, I mean, if we're at the point already of the FBI and FBI. Uh, rank and file agents being sent to sit in parking lots and take down numbers, license plate numbers of parents who want to issue a grievance at a school board meeting. Then just imagine what they could do without any humans involved. And that would mean no whistleblowers. There's yeah, right. there's yep. the problem that, that you run into that kind of power using that kind of technology. And there's no telling how far they would go. Some of the ridiculous things that have been said since we've been uh, last on the uh, the radio, we're going to have to throw your way today. Plus, we'll give you some of them when we talk about the AI, some of the stuff of what was inputted over the weekend that came out and, and just went viral on social media mm. that is quite humorous, except it's quite serious. Yeah. If, if they ever decide to go down, uh, you know, that path permanently. Mm-hmm. So we will get uh, to that. And you mentioned capitalism and there's something I got to talk about that also coming. Yeah. Just remi- reminded me of something from this past weekend. All right. Something that's All become right. a tradition for me that I did that I did yesterday. And then I went, oh man, you got to be kidding me. It is. It was hilarious. Mm-hmm. But that more coming up. We got a great show ahead. 866-90-RED-EYE. This report is brought to you by Shell Rotella. With advanced synthetic technology, is designed to help keep your rig running with more mileage and less maintenance. Tires command a lot of attention. As a top expense for drivers and a leading cause of CSA violations, any tire maintenance practice that can help extend tire life is worth consideration. Consider tire balancing, which can set you up for savings and a smoother ride before your tires touch the highway. Tire balancing and wheel alignment are different services, but both contribute to a smoother ride and should accompany tire replacements or repairs. Tire balancing corrects an uneven distribution of weight in tires and wheel assemblies, providing improved vehicle handling, increased fuel economy, and the overall lifespan of your tires. Balancing your tires also helps keep vehicle hardware like cab rivets tight and can help with the resale value of your vehicle. We'll be right back with more Red Eye Radio with Eric Harley and Gary McNamara. It's Red Eye Radio. He is Eric Harley and I'm Gary McNamara. So over the weekend, as you know, I, uh, I'm... Uh, mentioned it last week february 22nd to me i'll always remember and that was when the u.s olympic uh, hockey team beat the russians mm-hmm. you know the soviet union back in uh, 1980 and it's just that was always a huge moment for me 
And right. so on Friday, because all I did was all I did was work around the house. I got the tree cut, everything, everything I need to get done. But I just hung around the house the whole weekend doing stuff, doing chores. Yeah. So Friday night, it's like, yeah, got nothing to do. So I watched the last period, which is on YouTube, of the United States hockey team beating um, the uh, the Soviet Union. And then I watched the movie Miracle. Mm. Right, yeah. And then on Sunday morning, because it was a Sunday morning when it, when it uh, happened, I watched the last period, going back, YouTube's got it all, the last period of the uh, United States beating Finland for the gold medal. Mm. And that's just, it's great to uh, to watch. Mm. Then the documentary on YouTube came up right after the HBO documentary. Well, both the movie and the documentary list, you know, the players at the end and what they were doing like 25 years after. Right. They were all involved almost probably 80 to 85% of the players on the U.S. Olympic hockey team ended up in finance, banking, or asset management. And, yeah, all right. And so I've always thought communism versus, you know, that was communism versus <laughs> democracy. Yeah, right. <laughs> I understand that we're a constitutional republic. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and, <laughs> and so to see that, I always thought was fascinating. Well, the YouTube, after the HBO special that came out in 2005 um, that, that, I, that I watched, it has like sort of patriotic music afterwards. Whoever... Mm-hmm. Put this on YouTube when it ends, when they're showing the credits and you're seeing all the players that basically became capitalist. Yeah. Rage Against the Machine is playing over it at the end. They changed the music and put Rage Against. And I'm like, really? I, I don't think anybody else in the world would pick up on this why, except me. Yeah. Why would you? I wonder why they would choose to change the music at all. I have no idea. I don't know. It was the weirdest thing. And I know because I actually had, I probably still have it somewhere, I actually had the DVD of the Mm. HBO special Mm. that came out in 2005. And Rage Against the Machine does not end that documentary. Right. Yeah. Oh, okay. So is that their little shot? Yeah. Is that their little shot at it? And and so it was great. uh, It was great to watch that. Wow. It was uh, it was it was great. So I yeah. just I just wanted to mention that. Let's go to Mark in Carson City. We were talking about AI, uh, and we haven't even got to half the stuff we want to get to on AI. Some mm. of the stuff over the weekend, mm. Elon Musk was involved in. In fact, Mark, welcome. You're on Red Eye Radio. Welcome to the show. Hi, Mark. Oh, good evening, gentlemen. Good to hear from you. I'm, I can't believe we got this kind of quality at night. You know, with you two guys on, I really appreciate how great you are and what you do and all that stuff. But anyway, okay. I just want to talk about AI for a minute. Um, basically, what, the one thing I've been doing lately is I've been actually going back and now buying books, ordering books, mm. because the internet used to be a sweet deal. I used to feel good about it, and now it's being – it's like – it's so filtered yeah. now that yeah. if you say – they you want to have a negative story about um, Donald Trump right. or Hillary Clinton. Right. Well, Hillary Clinton will come back a lot better than Donald Trump mm. and just the way it is, and it's so antiquated right now. And I've been going by now. I've been going by in DVDs because the uh, movies are all over the place. The only thing I found out basically is the best thing to do is, you know, music. With music, you can't really do. You're better off using uh, like YouTube. But with um, DVDs, I've been buying them again. I've been like going backwards instead of mm. forward. Mm. And it really upsets me that they have destroyed or they're destroying this great thing that they could be and making us more efficient. Same thing with what they're doing with the electric car and all that stuff. And basically basically making this thing that should be advancing our world and our society and turning it into a basically a communist machine. But anyways, thank you, gentlemen. Oh, yeah, you have yeah. a great evening. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for your excellence. Thank, well, thank you. you. Thank oh, you, Mark. Thank we you greatly the, appreciate thank those comments. Nice thank you. And and you're right. There's too much garbage there. And as I mentioned, we do have great BS. Many of us do have great BS detectors, but it's going to require uh, a lot of, uh, you know, diligence going forward to keep all of this in order and it's going to be an uphill battle more listeners not now than now Depending on when now is Red Eye Radio.
And he's Eric Carley, and I'm Gary McNamara. Welcome and good morning. And uh, thanks for the last caller for the nice uh, words. Uh, we really, yeah, thank really, you very much. We really, really do appreciate it. Uh, one of the things is that when you when you look at this, it's such a debacle, and and that's where liberalism is right now. I mean, it's just it, they're they're just all of it's insanity. When you think yeah. about you know all the different issues out there, the specific things on the top five issues that we talk about all the time, uh, it's it's uh, insanity. But the whole thing with the AI. Again, over the last, uh, really the last week is when it's really hit with all the images and then what happened this uh, this weekend with people just saying, okay, let's ask a question to, you know, the Google, the Gemini uh, uh, app and what comes back is almost a comedy show. It's almost the Babylon Bee, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Really, seriously, it is. It's almost. A, and so what you get, though, is uh, this this product should have never been put out. It shows you how political agenda leads everything. Because if you're talking about creating an AI, basically uh, an, an AI encyclopedia system, and it can be so easily torn apart, then either you're completely incompetent, which I don't believe they are, or... Your political narrative leaves, leads uh, everything, which then gives a significant portion of the country the thought, here's another thing that's rigged. Mm-hmm. Everything is rigged. Everything is either, everything is either is, is gaslighting BS. I'm looking right here at this headline. We'll get to this a little bit later on. But Gavin Newsom, Biden's age is an asset. Well, it, it's an asset to him. He didn't finish the sentence because that'll mean that he'll be president sooner. <laughs> well, if you if if you if you change the definition of the word asset, mm-hmm. well, then maybe that might be true. Yeah. Now the you have definition to apply the asset an asset to whom, or well, ju- or just change the definition of an asset to mm-hmm. an asset is something that's bad, but well, otherwise it's, got the it's first gaslighting. Part of the word right. <laughs> but everything you're either being uh you're you're being lied to everything is bs you're the gaslighting and that's the thing right now and i don't think democrats even understand this the 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 bs the gaslighting the everything you do amplifies the accusation against you that every you wish to rig everything you saw some uh, the their report of some Democrat uh, members of the House saying if Trump wins, they won't certify the election. Mm-hmm. It's like okay, let's <laughs> right, and and they're blunt about it, and they don't they don't think there's any there there's no there's no consequences to it, but just you think about it and you look and go okay, what you get out of the last week, everything is rigged with with the uh, the the AI, everything is is uh from the democrats is not only not only are they lying about everything but they're gaslighting where everybody knows it yeah right uh and uh, what was the uh the other point uh, rigged line gaslighting oh there was one more that i had in there and i can't think of what it is here oh, oh, oh or or and not or and they wish to change the basic tenets of the United States of America and the Constitution of the United States. Well, and we see that every single day, you know, just chipping away at the Constitution. And and that's something that, you know, when you when you put all this together, uh, what we've talked about just so far in this show, and, and we're only, you know, just over a half hour in, the scary part becomes, and it always is, the scariest part, the most dangerous part, is when the government comes in with regulation. Remember, what were they going to have, a truth czar? Remember that whole thing? Remember when they floated the idea of a truth czar? (laughs) Misinformation. We're going to stamp out misinformation. When the left says that, what they're saying is, we're only going to have our misinformation, all the other stuff out there that this could be the truth is going to be burned to the ground. And so when they come in with heavy regulation, 
about, and they will, about what AI can deliver to you in terms of information AI, then that's where it starts to change. That's the shaping of the narrative. That's the controlling of the the conversation, which is then to the entire idea that is to lead to the shaping of minds, reshaping of minds. This is on a massive global scale indoctrination. And if you if people are going to be, again, willfully ignorant or just reliant on that search, and people are today, so a great number of people will remain reliant on it, looking down at their phone, looking to fact check something, and then all of a sudden something comes back and it was like, uh, yeah, that's not the case. You know, there's lots of misinformation. Um, my wife and I were watching uh, Iron Claw. And this was the story of the Von Erichs, the wrestling family. Oh, how is it? It's it's good. It's very good. There there are some casting misses. The actor that, that was cast to play Carrie Von Erich, mm-hmm. who was 6'4", six, 6'5". Six, the actor was about five i think he's five six five seven and that's a huge miss because he was supposed to carry von eric was this intimidating even though their brother david was the tallest he was like six seven six eight he died he was the first of the brothers uh to pass away in the 80s but um but overall the storytelling i thought was for those of us who grew up in texas who watched them as kids and then kind of saw that, you know, tragedy upon tragedy upon tragedy play out. It was like one of your neighbors was going through it at that time. Uh, I remember seeing um, uh, uh, Kevin Von Erich uh, at a at a restaurant. And and with his with his kids, uh, a couple of his kids uh, at the time, I didn't approach him. I didn't. I just remember seeing him there. Uh, he apparently is in now doing well he's in real doing real estate he has a ranch in hawaii yeah I've and seen, all of I've his, seen, yeah i've seen documentary he's got yeah. multiple generations living on that ranch and mm-hmm. and uh and uh good for him he's living you know able to survive what all the tragedy over and over again that happened in his family did you you ever get the, the I, I always got the feeling because i seen another documentary on kevin uh living in um in hawaii yeah and i thought to myself okay his family basically, you know, was destroyed when you think yeah. about it, yeah, everything and, and the suicides and, yeah. and, and yeah. all that. And you look at and it's almost as if he's saying, OK, it's up to me to rebuild the family. Well, that I always was got it. this when, thing. It's up to me. I'm 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 one of the I'm left. Let's rebuild the family. Let's build that sense of family. And he has again. four boys. Yeah. You know, and, you know, does that sound familiar? And then he has. Uh, two of those are in wrestling, um, you know, but he did. He took charge. Um, I think there's no doubt it's been troubling for him, but he has been able to persevere. And that's I, I think that's the best part of it. But it was it really was what kind of like watching going through a picture album of, of your or or maybe home videos of your neighbor because you felt like their neighbor when you grew up, when I grew up, you know, in, in Texas and then moved to North Texas when I was 15, almost 16 years old, um, I mean, they were huge. Actually, in Del Rio, you know, I remember in, uh, no, I would have gone back to Del Rio. That was actually the fabulous Freebirds. <laughs> that was, there was, a, they actually put on a, a wrestling show early on in their career uh, when I was in Del Rio. And then... We moved to North Texas when my dad uh, retired from the Air Force. And so it was, you know, it was a, it, you just kind of, once you learned of the Von Erichs and the early to mid 80s, you know, it was kind of that playing out, uh, the first tragedy with, with David and then, you know, going on through that. It was really sad. You just kind of felt a connection, a uh, local connection to them. And that, that still remains today, I think. But my wife had, had looked up something about one of the brothers and, and a couple of the sources had it completely wrong. 
And, you know, it was like, you know, why in the world? I mean, I guess there are people out there that, you know, just thrive on putting out false information or saying, you know, things that, well, I knew the family and this is what really happened or whatever. And they feel like they have to go. Put, I don't know why you would get off on doing that, but people do. And it was it was false information. Uh, there were a lot of, in fact, uh, the way, uh, you know, that that, uh, you know, all of that kind of went down. And, and, you know, there were some facts that the movie didn't cover. It uh, kind of, you know, didn't get into a couple of the things with a couple of the brothers. And, you would, you know, if if Kevin was behind the making of the movie, then it's natural for a family member not to go down certain roads. They were they were painful and maybe he felt mm-hmm. they weren't necessarily relevant. And this was his storytelling uh, and his right to do that, I guess. And but the information that was out there and it was like, you know, those are the things you look at. It, it's in the grand scheme of things. You know, was it relevant to to my life? Well, not really. Uh, it was it was entertainment, and I was looking at you know, look we were looking up information. But when you get into the overall regulation of where this is going to go, and it's the regulate they're already talking about it, how they need to regulate AI. The reason they need to regulate it on the left is because they need to be able to control that narrative, and the they know they can only do that. There is a profit motive in the private sector. That will hopefully keep many of the AI players, hopefully, keep many of the play uh, those players uh, honest, because, like the whole Pope thing, that was just like a that was really one of those things where it was so obvious, so blatant, and it had this, this visual effect that it was just comical, and people mocked it, as they should. If you're In the private sector, and you want to keep those profits rolling, you're going to have to serve the customer. But the government can't have that because what what the left cannot have is the truth. Well, what happened, what what I think happened is they look at it and they go, okay, this is just ridiculous from the left. And they simply said, well, you can't really police uh, AI and Republicans and the right would take advantage of it. And it's all based on the fact of the insanity of the left that's inside of Google running it yeah. and running the AI and the garbage right. in, garbage out. Right. And that's the one thing, as we've seen, you know, when you talk about the misinformation czar that went down the toilet and we're like, this administration that are pathological liars and to the point of gaslighting are accusing anybody of misinformation and they say their goal is against misinformation, it, that it actually made people angrier. Yeah. Because what you're saying, you're yeah. the liar telling other people not. You're the pathological liar that everybody knows is a pathological liar. Yeah. And you're telling me, well, we're going to make sure that you can't lie. We exactly. need to make sure that you can't lie. Exactly. It's like, stop it. No, that's it. And and they get there. There, There is no I mean, there's there's political fallout, but there real, there's no legal fallout any time that they lie. But yeah. they're going to control right. your line. Well, they say they're going to. They just want to make sure that the right lies are being told. That's what it comes down to. Eight six six ninety red eye Coming up, more with Gary McNamara and Eric Harley. It's Red Eye Radio. It's Friday Radio. He's Eric Harley, and I'm Gary McNamara. Everything we've got coming up <laughs> from the uh, the results of the South Carolina uh, uh, primary to the uh, insanity of one of Politico's reporters about what Christian nationalism is. You and I have always yeah. asked the question, could somebody please define it? Right. Finally, somebody from Politico did. Okay. And according to that definition... Mm-hmm. Joe Biden is a Christian nationalist. Oh, don't you hate when that happens? By what by what he has said, right? And and so uh, wait till you hear this because it's basically the uh, the 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 tenet of uh, the mindset and the spirit of why this country was founded mm. is what they claim is uh, Christian nationalism, right? And wait till we get uh, to uh, that because that's uh, great. Uh, this story here: Fed favored inflation gauge 
seen rising the most in a year. A Bloomberg story mm. uh, that we uh, will uh, get to. Mm-hmm. You know, I, we didn't even talk about Biden's dogs. Somebody said, you know, if that happened anywhere else. Oh, my gosh. People would be in jail. Oh, yeah. And I went, you know, I never thought about that because yeah. it's just in the White House. So right. And it, it wasn't it, just one dog. No. No. The dogs are angry. Yeah. Jack. <laughs> roo, roo. Jack. I mean, seriously. And our pets many times are a reflection of our personality and our attitude. They are. (laughs) They are. Top of the Hour News is brought to you by House Products. Visit HouseProducts.com. This is Red Eye Radio on Westwood One. Now, it's Red Eye Radio. Gary McNamara and Eric Harley talk about everything from politics to social issues and news of the day. Whether you're up late or you're just starting your day, welcome to the show. From the Uniden America Studios, this is Red Eye Radio. All across America and around the planet, we are Red Eye Radio. Welcome and good morning. Thank you for being here. What's the temperature going to be like today here in Texas? Like ninety three? Yeah, I've seen it. It's uh, it it varies because it was ninety six a few days ago. They were predicting for Monday, and then ninety two, ninety four, and it just depends on where you are in the metroplex. But yeah, I didn't see the ninety six. Yeah, wow. I I yeah, I wish I crazy. Have, wish I would have seen that one. Which I... means that in some parts of Texas. North Texas here, at least we could get close to a hundred, maybe. Guess we'll see. Well, well, there's a lot of concrete. Yep. Right, right now they have it at ninety five today. Mm-hmm. Weather Channel, and then ninety tomorrow, and then fifty five is the high on Wednesday. Yeah, it's only going to get down to like sixty eight this morning. <laughs> And the high will be in the fifty mid fifties on Wednesday. Well, I, I and then was, back in the eighties over the weekend. I was out doing lawn work all weekend, and I didn't get everything done that I wanted to get done. Mm. And I was thinking, man, I, it's, you know, I got to get all this stuff done. And I, all of a sudden, I realized because it's been warm, I'm thinking it's like April. It's like, oh my gosh, it's. We haven't even gone through the end of February. We're not yet. even to March 1st yet. <laughs> no, it's, it's, no, it's seriously yeah. crazy. Yes, and, and I like it. I, I'm I okay like with warm weather. Yeah. Um, it just makes me wonder what the summer is going to be like if we're already into the mid-90s in February. All right, this was this was a highlight of my weekend. Well, yeah. well one of the highlights of my weekend, news-wise. Mm-hmm. And uh, this is where the political reporter was on MSNBC, Heidi Pris, uh, uh, Prisbill, Prisbill, I think it is. There's her mm-hmm. name. I'm not sure. That like, looks like how it's Prisbill. Mm-hmm. Prisbill? Mm-hmm. It's Prisbill then. Mm-hmm. The A at the end is silent of her name then. The, the what is silent? There's an A at the end of her name. That must be silent. Oh, then. okay. All right. Well, we have a, what, a Lauren Prisbill here at, at one of the local stations. So if there's an A on it, maybe it's. Prisbilla, maybe. Yeah, that's what. Yeah. yeah. Well, she was on MSNBC on. Uh, she works for Politico, and uh, she was on Friday night. And here's what she had to say because I got into the entire talk about Christian nationalism, and we have always stated that they throw that out there, yet nobody knows. I don't know what their definition of it is. Mm-hmm. What's a Christian nationalist? Right. She makes it clear. All right, what she believes is Christian nationalism, which we must avoid. Yes. Here we go. Here we go. The one thing that unites all of them, because there's many different groups orbiting Trump, but the thing that unites them as Christian nationalists, not Christians, by the way, because Christian nationalists is very different, Mm -hmm. is that they believe that our rights as Americans, as all human beings, don't come from any earthly authority. They don't come from Congress. They don't come from the Supreme Court. They come from God. Hmm. (laughs) All right. By the way. That's all Christians. <laughs> yeah, I mean, did you not know that? 
There's and, a, and see, with Christians who aren't Christian nationalists, then the authority comes where? From where? And what? what is it that they put first in their life? I'm sorry. Are you not paying attention? And, I mean, that it just created a firestorm. It was one of those idiot moments where people uh-huh. were like, does she even know what's in the Declaration of Independence? Does she know the... That it's in that document, and that's by the way, it's not the Constitution, but that's not the Constitution. Mm-hmm. Doesn't matter. That's an official document of the creation of the United States and yeah. why we were created. So when the they talk about the unalienable rights of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, that comes from what? That comes from the Creator, and life is in there. And so I want to play this uh, this next audio because this is. Uh, hang on one second here. Don't uh, get ready to go yet. I want to go to. Uh, Joe Biden, uh, going back a couple of years, back in 1987, all right? And this is the evidence that by Politico uh, and their reporters' analysis of what is Christian nationalism than Biden is. I believe all Americans are born with certain inalienable rights. As a child of God, I believe my rights are not derived from the Constitution. My rights are not derived from any government. My rights are not derived from any majority. My rights are because I exist, I have certain rights. That they're given to me and each of my fellow citizens by our creator. It's something that we have been saying, and and that statement by Biden from a long time ago uh, is correct. And, And we've been saying this for a long, long time. Our rights are assigned by our creator. They are they are given to us by our creator, not assigned not assigned by man. And the difference would be because for the left, many on the left that believe, well, it was assigned, these rights were just assigned by men because they want you to believe that because they believe then men can take them away. You you have those rights, as mentioned here, because you exist. Right. And not even because the Supreme Court defines what those rights are. Mm-hmm. They don't create it. Right. And neither does the legislature. Right. Neither do other men. That was the, that's in the the original founding document mm-hmm. of the United States of America, which right. was really that signature and those signatures on the Declaration of Independence was laying out for that point and all history why this nation exists. Right. And the funny thing was her attempting to backtrack on it. And it got really, really poor where she was talking about, well, what? You're, you're taking it wrong. What I meant is uh, Christian nationalism will, will say all rights are derived from God. And then like on abortion, uh, it's the men. They don't know what God thinks. It's what men it's what you know a man thinks mm-hmm. uh you know a, 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 where abortion comes from it's just like no and when you read the declaration of independence you see one of the unalienable rights life mm-hmm. right and then you have to define where life begins most christians believe not all but most christians believe that life begins uh when the two cells meet Mm -hmm. at conception yep Mm -hmm. and so uh when you uh you know and and you see it now you know the polling that came out last week huge pluralities there's a bunch of people that says we don't know but huge pluralities believe uh in the uh you know here in the united states the uh the voter uh that life begins sometime in the womb Mm mm-hmm so that debate continues, and it's between conception. Well, I ask this question. Why is it radical to say life begins at conception and not 21, and, and, and not 21 weeks? Right. Why, is one, why is one becoming much more mainstream and the other is viewed by liberals as being radical? Right. And they can't answer it, but her backtracking was just... And, she also put it on Twitter. Same thing. She's done it twice now, and she was backtracking. But there were so many questions like, are they really that ignorant as to not understanding what the foundation of the country is? 
and you know she was blaming you know this Christian nationalism. You know, then they go and and they, and they vote you know by their religion. Well, many people do. Yeah, Christians aren't the only ones that do that. Right. Many people vote by what their you know religion uh, dictates them. I always go back to the uh, article that was written. This goes back maybe twenty years ago. From the Boston uh, Globe columnist and I believe editor now, Jeff Jacoby, mm. who wrote a whole thing. And this is when the whole thing with the left was on, you know, uh, uh, the state can't be involved in anything to do with Christmas whatsoever. Right, right. And he just said, what in the world are people talking about? He goes, I'm Jewish. We love going to look at Christmas lights. Because mm. yeah. my family, we all get in the car. We don't celebrate Christmas. We love seeing Christmas. And this entire thing that that uh, that this nation was formed on Christian values, he goes, it was. And one of those Christian values was what? That every religion can practice here without fear. Yeah. Right. That, yeah, understand that if you say it was formed on Christian values, that the freedom of religion... It wasn't where they said only Christians are allowed. They did the exact opposite, Mm -hmm. which was they made sure that it was instilled that the government can't get and be involved and you are free to do it. He said the left should be celebrating Christian Mm -hmm. values Mm -hmm. because Christian values is what gave us the First Amendment. That was I mean, I thought that was one of the most excellent uh, column columns I ever read. Yeah, yeah. Now, I'm we, paraphrasing here. I don't have it in front of me. That was right. twenty, probably twenty years ago, because I was still doing my local show at the time. Mm-hmm. Well, we talked yeah. about it on this show, and yeah. we, you know, those are the things that that a lot of the left wants to totally ignore. They, 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 in order to chip away at at the foundation of this nation, you have to go in and you have to dismantle the Constitution. Uh, when it comes to freedom of religion, well, your religion makes you a bigot, and if we can show that and that your and then create laws against you being a bigot in that way, then we can dismantle your religion. If you, because of your religion, don't allow your child to have genital mutilation surgery then your religion has led you to abuse this is what the left believes we've been pointing at it for a long long time and it's here and this is what they plan to do start changing the language start outlawing certain language Start shaping the narrative and, well, go in and over-regulate the Internet to make sure that we can control that narrative at every turn. And if you step out of line, we'll take your children. If you step out of line, we'll be at your door. Yeah, we know that's already happening. The The intimidation is constant. It is relentless. And it must be stopped. Yeah, we brought you the Indiana case last week. Yep. The child was taken from yep. the parents. Right. Because the parents said, no, we're not going to use the, the pronoun right. that he wishes. And so they took him away. And that's what's actually happening here. And they're trying to, uh, again, uh, radicalize things that uh, when you actually break them down are not radical at all. Well, in, in the problem that the left doesn't see, we talked about how the left you know, wants to take on the they don't see that they're taking on the parents. You know, Disney believed they were going to war with a governor, a Republican governor in Florida. No, you were going to war with the parents that fund 100% of your parks and your entertainment companies. These people didn't see that. Well, what the left also doesn't see is they think they're winning with different ethnic backgrounds. They think they're winning with Minorities, they think they're win- They're losing more and more because one thing they don't understand is people will not, absolutely will not abandon their deeply held beliefs. 
ever. And this is why I think for a lot of them, they're looking at it going, look, you can live the way you want to live, but the more you tell, I talked to a young man again, talking about his his children and what they're teaching children in school. And he says, I can't believe it. He's from California, by the way. Moved to Texas for opportunity and said, and he's in his late 30s, and he said, I can't believe they're doing this. I don't know why they would want to do this except for to control the minds of my children. And every he has four kids, and every single day we go over what they learned in school like good parents do. And every single day he's learning more and more. Well, he's no longer a California liberal. By the way, he happens to be Hispanic. This is what is going on over and over again because it doesn't matter what your background is. One common thread with all of us is the fact that we adhere to our deeply held beliefs and no one, no one will take that from us. 86690-RED-EYE. Brought to you by FPPF, Fuel Power Max. Owner-operators can save a hefty amount of money by participating in discount fuel networks. If you're leased and your fleet has a fuel optimizer program, use it. Such a program helps plan a trip based on fuel prices and locations in the carrier's fuel network. The larger the carrier, typically the larger the discounts that are possible. Fees for using such networks have become rare thanks to competition for drivers. Owner-operators are well advised, however, to pass up network fuel stops that are too costly are too far off route, sell inferior fuel, or are dangerously or poorly maintained. For independent owner-operators, a bevy of fuel discount networks exists, from a variety of traditional fuel cards to the National Association of Small Trucking Companies network and the younger mud flap applications discounts at independent truck stops around the nation. Research the options and discounts available to find the right one for you. Owner-Operator Business 101 is provided by Overdrive's Partners in Business program. Go to overdriveonline.com to the Partners in Business section of the website for more details on this and many other topics. Brought to you by Shell Rotella, with advanced synthetic technology is designed to help keep your rig running with more mileage and less maintenance. Lines open for your calls. 866-90-RED-EYE on Red Eye Radio. It's Red Eye Radio. He is Eric Carly, and I'm Gary McNamara. But seriously, I mean, there's no self-awareness at all when, uh, you know, Politico, which is a major political magazine, left bias, mm-hmm. left-wing bias, mm-hmm. uh, excuse me, uh, website, not magazine, <laughs> uh, website. Uh, periodical. Periodical. <laughs> Thank you. Very, I like that. <laughs> it's a periodical. Uh-huh. I don't read regular news sites. I read periodicals. Well. Well, wearing my my robe and my ascot and smoking okay. my pipe in my slippers. Right. That only contains tobacco. Why do we got to get into the facts, man? <laughs> uh, but when... What are you, when, a cop? But when you sit there and... Because when I saw that the first time, I'm like, there's got to be more. There has to be different... Co- there is no different context in it. No. And it's like here she is saying that Christian nationalism is people that believe that our rights that we have as Americans come from God and not from the Supreme Court or or man. Yeah. It's like, right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's Christian nationalism? Yeah. Do really? You, it's it's <laughs> like really? she was like she was divulging <laughs> something that nobody knew. They Believe in a higher being, right? And that were rights are derived, <laughs> and and you're thinking, has she ever read the Declaration of Independence? You know what else? Has she ever? I mean, it it showed it when you when I saw it. I went, is she really that ignorant to say something like that? Apparently so. Yeah, they also go to the same place once a week. 
or for some of them, twice a year. <laughs> Christmas and Easter. <laughs> You're listening to Red Eye Radio from the Uniden America Studios. It's Red Eye Radio. He's Eric Carlin. I'm Gary McNamara. Good morning. Download our Red Eye Radio app today and you can listen when and where you choose if you can't listen live overnight to one of our great radio station affiliates. All right. South Carolina primary. Trump wins by 20. Yep. <laughs> Boy, I love this. AP, AP called it the moment the polls closed. <laughs> for Trump. I know. It was crazy. Did uh and just the analysis uh, on it. Look, there's a lot of things, you know, if you look at the polling over the last couple of weeks. A few weeks ago Trump was up 35-36. Mm-hmm. He won by 20. Mm-hmm. So, and 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 when the polls came out recently, they were uh the last two polls were 20 and 21. Yeah. But a few weeks back they were 35-36. Mhm. Here's my question that I have. How accurate are the polling? It's something that we brought up before on the show. How accurate is polling when you have an open primary? Right. Yeah. I mean, because who do you interview mm-hmm. for the, the polls? So we've always been a little bit suspicious of polls in South Carolina, but the last two ended up being pretty accurate. Yeah. The other thing we don't know, because I was reading the Wall Street Journal saying he can't win without Nikki Haley voters. Well, it depends who the Nikki Haley voters are. Well, that's it. The primary doesn't tell us everything about them. It also doesn't. You can't vet them to say, you know, in, in that polling, you and or even exit polling, you can't vet them to determine how many of them may have voted in an open primary, may have voted for Nikki Haley just to try and wreck Trump's chances. Right. And you know, so how would it go actually on November fifth? There's no way to apply that because you don't know just because of it's the nature of an open primary. And I, and I did see, for example, exit polling that showed what percentage of independents, mm-hmm. you know, uh, you know, voted for uh, Nikki Haley and and, you know, uh, Christian um, uh, Christian nationalists. I had, yeah. to, I had to throw that in there. Yeah. <laughs> Evangelicals, as they called them in the the polling that I saw. <laughs> uh, but um, you really can't tell much from that because I don't know what percentage they they don't mark down what percentage of independents voted and unless i have all those numbers you know how many democrats crossed the line and voted in this one to vote for nikki haley yeah that was my point about not being able to really outline who has an agenda to get you know uh, and and crosses the line to do that in an open primary you'll never know and could right because percentages don't tell me that right only the actual numbers do so it's it's uh it's it's tough uh, I did read the National Review uh, our article, Phil Klein, uh, South Carolina results show why it's hard to run on electability. You know, for example, Nikki Haley, you know, she's more electable because of what the overall polls say for the general um, uh, uh, election. And he, he makes a great point, and it's true. When we ask a person, well, who's electable? The person I vote for. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I vote for Trump. He's electable. Mm-hmm. And, and so that's – and to view it this far out, with the Democrats panicking, I mean, to the point, I'm I'm, I'm reading here Jen Psaki uh, over the weekend, Trump is actually running to end the presidency as we know it. Yeah. You know, it's, I mean, they can't, they've gone as far as they can. They're sort of just repeating it. And by the way, when they're talking to it, if they're on MSNBC, they're talking to the converted anyway. Right. You're not rid that general message isn't getting out there. In fact, Republicans are taking those kind of messages like that uh, where uh, Jen Psaki said Trump is actually running to end the presidency as we know it. And they're putting it on social media so everybody can see it. The Republicans are not afraid of the the over the top messages. You know, Republicans didn't run away 
uh, from the political reporter saying that, you know, defining basically Christian nationalism. Mm -hmm. They went out and said, (laughs) here's what she's saying. It's so insane right now that when Democrats attack Republicans, Republicans are using that attack to help benefit them. Mm -hmm. I did see a poll on on the border since the whole, you know, the the whole deal between Senate Republicans. Biden was down another point. Didn't help the Democrats at all. The public saw through it. Mm -hmm. And how did the public see through it? They knew it didn't matter what kind of law you came up with. It's can anybody make Joe Biden abide by the by by the law? That narrative is also out there at the moment. And so while they're screaming and screaming and screaming, the Republicans are actually taking that screaming and running on it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Well, and and that's always a good thing. Never back down from anything that they're, you know, uh, the the false points that they're trying to make. Um, we pointed to a number of people who might be uh, really great picks for for the president or the former president if he becomes president again uh, when it comes to uh, Trump's deep picks. And we brought up last week Byron Donalds, and there seemed to be a lot of buzz about him over the weekend. Oh, I know. And, you know, we'll see where it goes. You know, I mean, there are a handful of really great picks. And I think Byron Donalds is right there with Sarah Huckabee Sanders. And the reason that you would probably associate her with him is, number one, the natural reason of her serving um, at the White House with him. But also the fact that she was able to win a governor's race. Um, And she's not, she does not back down at all. From the media, something we like about Byron Donalds, and I think you know it's going to take that as a as a veep. The one thing about Mike Pence is nobody knows what his voice sounds like. That was the problem with Mike Pence. Now, it may have been a strong point for Trump. From Trump's point of view, is that Mike Pence wasn't the point. In 2016, it was to bring on, you know, probably bring on some of those Christian nationalists <laughs> to vote for him. But the fact is, is that he was a guy that really you never heard from. Well, if Trump wins, his V pick is going to have to be a little bit more active, a little more, a little louder, because the idea needs to be that that person can go on and run for president in 2028. And they need to be a strong candidate for that uh, going in and then coming out of that four-year period with Trump. And there are so many variables that could affect that, including how everything goes with the Donald Trump presidency and and, and his actions and, and what he does during that time. So, you but you want somebody who's not going to back down from the media. And so when you look at that, it's not going to be DeSantis. And here's, you know, for those DeSantis loyalists, that means there could be there could be bad news for DeSantis in terms of how long it may take him to get to the White House. I'm not even I'm not that that's so far down the road. I'm I'm. I can't predict what's going to happen. But it's in interesting November. to think about, nonetheless. <laughs> it is interesting to think about because if he goes in and he's and if he's not the V pick, and there is a strong V pick, and Trump wins, then the strong that that V pick would run likely. And if they they run and they win and they get two terms and blah 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 blah, then it could be several years down the road before Ron DeSantis ever. Yeah is on the rise again for that office. I saw some conversations over about that over the weekend. A lot of people still doing the wishful thinking thing. Ron DeSantis isn't going to do it because Ron DeSantis wasn't, doesn't want to tie his presidency to, to Trump. He doesn't want to tie his political future. And he said, he said no again, next last week. And he said, no, when he, when he, uh, 
dropped out, and he said no last year. So he's yeah. always he's yeah. always said no. That's, that's my point. Right, is that he's not going to do it. Right. And so when you have Nikki Haley staying in, well, I'm going to stay in it. It's important. I owe it to. Uh, I don't want to have a Soviet style. This is so ridiculous. A Soviet style election process. This isn't Soviet style, and you know it. By the way, you saying that sounds ignorant. It sounds ignorant. And these are the things that that I look at and say, all right, she's going to stay in it because she has money. She's going to stay in it to well, make a point. She's Well, she's. I believe now she's staying in it because you saw the uh, No Labels Party uh, out there over the weekend, out there on Sunday, mm-hmm. stating that they're really interested now in Nikki Haley. Mm-hmm. Because and she has a war chest walking in. Right, because I believe, I don't care if they've said, well, we don't we don't want, uh, if it ends up being uh, Biden and Trump, uh, we don't want that. No, you don't want Trump. You'll do anything to be the spoiler for Trump. Right. And that means whoever. Right. And that's, and so... Um, you know, that's I believe that's what it's about for her mm-hmm. is, OK, if I can if I can make it through Super Tuesday, I got to go through. I, I, I did bookmark, I think, the the all the other. Oh, I thought I bookmark all the other states and uh, what the numbers are polling wise. I'll have to go back and look at that here again, because I it was like, OK, if you if you look at all the different polling out there, does she have a chance of picking up 30 to 40 percent. And if she does that, even if Trump wins by, you know, 20 or 30, is that enough for no labels to say, okay, we can grab that. That's the best mm-hmm. shot we have, mm-hmm. you know, is to go with that. And that's the best way to defeat Trump. Well, and and that's it. Um, over the weekend and, and, and the point I was reaching was there was a lot of talk also about Nikki Haley staying in only because she wants to be at the top of mind for Trump. She wants to demonstrate to him what she can bring to the table. And I thought to myself, again, I can't predict the future. I certainly can't predict the future of Donald Trump. (laughs) But you look at it uh, from a Nikki Haley perspective, and I think she wants this to be about her. I don't think she would want to serve four years as his veep for the same reason a lot of people wouldn't want to serve for those four years because they see it as a great liability on their on their political future from their perspective. DeSantis already has his political future outlined. The timeline may may vary, but as long as he wants to run for office, he's going to be a, a very decent candidate and he's going to have some pretty strong support. Well, Nikki Haley... Not so much. It's going quite the opposite direction for her. And if she had a political future, it would almost completely rely on her being Trump's beat pick. I don't see I, that. No, happening. that's not happening. It's not going to happen. I, I, that would it is, that would surprise me a lot. I don't. Well, that's that's, that's where I was right. going with the the conversation over the weekend about it. It's more. I can't make a prediction full out, but I'm not placing that bet. And it's more of the dream ticket thing. Well, he should pick her anyway. They should, you know, kiss and make up and blah, 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 blah. Well, number one, that's sexist. Number two, it ain't going to happen. 866-90-RED-EYE. Get in touch with Red Eye Radio, toll free at 866-90-RED-EYE. It's Red Eye Radio. He is Eric Hurley, and I'm Gary McNamara. Yeah, just looking at uh, some of the other uh, states out there. To to if you're asking yourself the question, why is Nikki Haley staying in? And I do believe it's to see if possibly she can get enough support uh, for the No Labels Party. We'll get to that uh, in a little bit because the head of the No Labels Party was on one of the Sunday morning news shows yesterday. But looking at some of the other states, in te- now this goes back a couple of weeks ago. All right, so things could change. 
as you get closer. We saw that the polls tightened up. Uh, I mean, tightened up, went from the mid-30s to Trump with a 20-point uh, uh, victory mm. in just a couple of weeks. So there could be movement. But in Texas, uh, the uh, president uh, up 62 points on average mm-hmm. over Nikki Haley. Mm-hmm. California, 54 points. Massachusetts, 33.6 points. Minnesota, Trump leads by 62 points, in one, according to one poll. North Carolina, Trump leads an average of 53.3 points. Oklahoma, Trump leads by 77 points. Tennessee, Trump leads by 63 points. Texas, Trump leads by an average of 62 points. Utah, Trump leads Haley by 27 points, but 13% of those went to DeSantis when they were doing those polls. Uh, Vermont, Trump leads by 28 points. Virginia, Trump leads by 59 points. Uh, According to one poll, uh, this was from Newsweek uh, about a week, uh, about nine days ago. Newsweek was unable to obtain head-to-head polling results in other Super Tuesday states. So there you go. Yeah. And by the and remember at that time the former governor, uh, this was ten days ago, was uh, uh, the former governor does fare better in South Carolina than she does nationally, but is still polling at an average of thirty point three percent of a vote compared to Trump sixty six point one percent. And you see how that closed. But again, when you talk, take it in open primary. It's yeah. too hard to, in my opinion, it's too hard to figure out. Right. Yep. This is Red Eye Radio on Westwood One. Now, it's Red Eye Radio. Gary McNamara and Eric Harley talk about everything from politics to social issues and news of the day. Whether you're up late or you're just starting your day, welcome to the show from the Uniden America Studios. This is Red Eye Radio. All across America and around the planet, we are Red Eye Radio. Good morning. Thank you for being here. He's Eric. I'm Gary. Hi. Hi. There you go. Now on to Super Tuesday. Uh, I've I've been getting a ton of local people that are running. Yeah, right. Because uh, we're in early voting now, mm-hmm. and it's just amazing how still in uh, still in the state of Texas. You know, of course, illegal immigration is on there, but really for the local things. Uh, you know, that's more state and national for local city and school board. Right. Yeah. So much of it is on critical race theory. Right. And the liberal radical transgender movement. And, you know, every day I get, all right, we are the pack that is supporting all of these candidates. Make it simple for you. All of these candidates are against the teaching of critical race theory and the radical, insane, liberal, transgender activist movement. Boom. Mm hmm. And I'm just I find that fascinating just because because locally, even if they mention illegal immigration, them lives as a problem. What they can actually do about it is very little because they're local. Yeah. And so. um, I just I just found that found that interesting. Yeah. You know, that's that coming up next. And Mm. who knows? I don't think so. Everybody jumps on. Whatever happens, both parties, and it's natural. That's what they do in election time. You know, this is what this election means. I can't really tell you what it means. South Carolina primary. No, except actually. Trump, except Trump's going to win the nomination, and Nikki Haley, you know, may get out of it, uh, you know, the no labels party. Yeah. Uh, besides that. I mean, that, she's auditioning yeah. for something. Yeah. Besides that, I can't. I can't come to any type of conclusion. I've said this before. It's still too early. You see how things drastically change, how news items come out. It's like, whoa. You see, for example, the legislation where I'm sure Democrats thought that they could go to the American public and say, see, we've got, you know, we have a uh, comprehensive immigration plan here and it does everything. And some Republicans are aboard. It's the Republicans fault. And then I saw in the last poll, Biden's number goes down another point on the border and immigration. So the public isn't buying it. 
And so I don't know how this ends up. Trump can win in November. Trump can lose in November. Either of those possibilities is still open. Yeah. Be- right. and, and the reason I say that is Biden should be down 20 points. Yeah, easily. If you're looking at the issues, Biden should be down 20 points. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if you look at and, his dismal approval numbers, maybe even further, but 20 points, right. yeah, at least, yeah. right? Yeah. And and that's based it, on the issues. That's based on the issues of where we are, right? Right. Now. You look at the issues where it stands on the issues. And I'm right. being generous to Biden with that number. <laughs> yep. If it's based on the issues and the issues only. And it continues to be that way. And what they do is they just come out, they come out being more radical, more radical, more radical. Look, it didn't help the other day, the, the whole Fonnie Willis. Oh, kid, boy, that seems like it was a year ago. <laughs> I'm telling you, so much happened over the weekend. Just popped into my mind now, the Fonnie Willis thing. Mm-hmm. All of a sudden, all the emails that have come out. Yeah, right. I mean, I don't know. Number one, I don't know how this doesn't get... You know, they're, that they're not disqualified. Uh, how it isn't dismissed, you need to dismiss this and start over again because the prejudicial bias coming from the prosecution is mind-boggling. And then when you get to the fact of perjury. Mm. Perjury on the stand. Mm-hmm. Whoa. Well, and more data coming out showing she was lying. Oh yeah, the 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 uh, the, the the telephone records mm-hmm. that were very late, which they got, you know, the G, his GPS, his GPS showing at his he place. was at at her place at, at right. least thirty five mm-hmm. times. Yep, early in the morning, early dude. early, and so the timeline you can't deny the evidence, and if you do in court and you lie about it, and you're found guilty of it. You can go to jail for it. Yep. And, man, and, this it, it's just getting worse and worse and worse. And I fully expected, by the way, I put at least a decent chance on her stepping down before it reached that point. And so I, I'm guessing because, and, and I'm guessing I'm right on the whole her auditioning uh, for MSNBC with the show she put on the first day of the hearing. Because she may realize, well, my career may be over. I may be, I may be disbarred after this. She and could, she could end up doing a little jail. Time. You know, yeah. And you know, live live from live from jail on MSNBC. Lean forward. Um, <laughs> as political prisoner, yes, Fonnie Willis. Yes, exactly. And here's why it matters. Um, <laughs> well, I. <laughs> What gets to me is, and I think this is a bigger problem for for Democrats and even in the media, it could be a bigger problem because they have no self-awareness, is they are in so incredibly arrogant, cocky, whatever you wish to call it, for Fonnie Willis to bring this to to bring this to trial, number one with the, you know the whole, uh, you know Rico Act thing, which that is never going to. Even if they find a jury, it's never going to stand higher courts because it's not right. it's not part right. of the Rico, Rico law. You would again, as we explained it before, you would have to then prove that the only reason that the Trump campaign exists is because they're a criminal enterprise. And you can't make that. You, there is no evidence to make that case. No. So she first promoted and ran on the fact that she was going to get him. Then proceeded to come up with the RICO Act, which people looked at and went, well, this is ridiculous. And then she did everything wrong as if she is so arrogant that she can do whatever she wants. And there is no consequences to ever pay. That when you look at it here, I haven't seen anybody say that those phone records aren't correct. If they are, they perjured themselves on the stand. Who would start a relationship if you're going to be involved 
in doing this, knowing. Hey, I'll, I'll say this: Google and AI. Look, look how quickly they tore. You know, they tore that apart with the whole Gemini thing. Instantly mocked it. You can't if if you're going to do something in today's uh, uh, arena of ideas in the political world. You've got to be clean. But you can't go after somebody and then commit the same crime that you allegedly and so make it so clearly with the evidence. They knew the phone records were out there somewhere. They're just so they're so arrogant. They believe that they can hide evidence that indicts them, yet they'll make up evidence yeah. about someone else or they'll take a law which was not supposed to be applied to someone and apply it. And you don't think that when you do that, that the opposition and well-trained defense lawyers aren't going to come after you? That they're not going to be able to find this evidence? Right. It was. I mean, the carelessness, the carelessness, if you were, if your goal was to uh, railroad Donald Trump. Mm-hmm. Well, then you got to be careful. You, If you're going to do wrong and you're going to get people to trust you, we're going to railroad this guy even though it's not there. Mm-hmm. You cannot be doing the same thing that you're accusing him of doing. Right. With an arrogance of, we're never going to get caught. We're never going to get caught. Well, you got caught. And it's just... I'm I'm blown away by their lack of self-awareness combined with their arrogance. Well, that it, it's but it's what the agenda, especially this agenda requires. Cuz they all think they're heroes. They all think they've got aha on Trump. Every one of them. You know, the courts in Colorado. Well, uh we're just going to take him off the ballot. We're, boom, gavel, guilty, no due process. We don't care. We believe he's guilty. He's off the ballot. I mean, this has been their approach. Remember when Cohen's office was raided? Aha, he's going to flip. Well, he turned out to be the bad guy. <laughs> I know. And liberal <laughs> media was like, okay, you can quit talking now. After a while, it's like, yeah, you're not helping. Hey, anyone remember the other lawyer that was going to be running? Michael, uh, what's his name? That was going to be, I mean, he was outlined as the savior for the Democratic Party. What was his name? Michael. I don't know. I keep thinking Scaramucci. <laughs> I don't <laughs> I know. I right? Scaramucci. The Mooch. <laughs> not, not. <laughs> and he was going to be. And they said, are, you know, they started asking him, are you going to run for office? Avenatti. Avenatti. You're going to run for office? He was going to be the savior. They've all got this arrogance in their mind, and the rest of them get behind the one person. Thinking, aha, they've got it. They say they've got it. Well, how do you know they've got it? Because they say they've got it. What if they don't? Well, they say they've got it, but they might not have it. What? But they said they've got it. Well, they don't have it. Bonnie Willis's case is weak. And now her integrity, in case you ever applied any integrity to her at all, is all but gone. Remember when Abinetti said he was going to run for pres- yeah, president? Yeah. And then you had all the everybody, everybody picked up on it. MSNBC constantly running. CNN, I mean, bringing on the guests. Mm-hmm. And we have, uh, and and not only is he Donald Trump's worst nightmare, he is. he may be the next president of the United States. And what a hero this guy is. He's a complete con man. Complete con man. Yeah. yeah. Right. And I'm, so I'm so glad you bro- brought up Avenetti because it does fit. It's like they never learn. They keep doing the same no, thing, they, the same thing, over and the over same again. thing. Fonnie Willis was was 2024's Michael Avenetti until it all crumbled on her. And it's like, excuse me, these allegations show you're the criminal. Well, I mean, come on. The left didn't care a thing about Liz Cheney 
until she was on the January 6th committee. Aha! We have a Republican! Yeah. Whatever. How'd that work out for you? Oh, she lost her whole state. That's how it worked out. Because over and over and over again, this this idea of going after him, the one guy, as we've been saying, all of this is based on the hatred for one guy. I tend to believe what we're seeing play out right now with Biden and Hunter Biden, Joe Biden, Hunter Biden, and now James Biden, Tito Biden, whoever, which, however many brothers he has, all of that is playing out right now. I think the reason that they're scared of Trump is because they believe when he gets in, when, you know, he started the whole drain the swamp, I don't even think he knew in 2016 what he was going to find out. And now we know if he becomes president again, then he sits in the chair that will give him access to how all of this went down. And that scares the hell out of them. 866-90 Red Eye. We'll be right back with more Red Eye Radio with Eric Harley and Gary McNamara. It's Red Eye Radio. He's Eric Harley and I'm Gary McNamara. Coming up following the bottom of uh, the hour, uh, illegal immigrants and uh, the uh, murder case in uh, Georgia, that nursing uh, mm-hmm. student, mm-hmm. and the 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 record of this illegal immigrant who should have been deported and never was. Yep. And we'll get into that because right now, uh, the border, illegal immigration, never been higher on the minds of the people of the United States right now. One of the dumbest things. And this is really dumb that I've heard the only defense Democrats have. And you've heard this over the last week or so after the that Times Square shooting and the fifth, uh, the 15 year old migrant mm-hmm. that was involved in uh, in in that one is, well, what you have to understand is uh, that uh, illegal immigrants on a per capita per capita don't commit as many crimes as American citizens per capita. Uh, I don't know whether that's true or not, but it doesn't matter. It's a dumb argument. Yeah, what you, what right. you're saying is, I live in an apartment with two other guys, and they're stealing my money. Mm-hmm. Uh, we always kept the door open. We never locked the door. Mm-hmm. And somebody else came in and stole money, too. But don't worry, since... It's two to one. Two of the people that live there stole from me, and the person that didn't live there also stole from me. Per capita, people that come into my house and steal from me are less than my own roommates. Uh Therefore, there is no need to lock the door. Right. I mean, it's pure idiocy that's coming out of the left right now. Well, I mean, it it is insanity and they and they they make it worse by making stupid arguments like that. They prove that they don't care about closing the border. Yeah. You know, it's very different. Trump won in 2016 in part because of the border. And if you look at where we are in 24 because, you know, you think about outgoing Obama Yeah, he clearly shared responsibility for the broken border then. But just that's just the way it was. Um, His policies also were insane, except for Biden came in in January of 2021 and ramped it up to the nth degree. Biden owns more of the border crisis directly now than any sitting president ever has in their during their years. That's the difference. So you see these stories playing out and people, you know, greatly concerned about this. That favors Trump all day long. And I think people look at that also and think about 
all right, where do I want to be in terms of what's my mindset? You know, do I actually even hate Trump or is, have I just been following the narrative? You know, Michael Rappaport is one that we've been watching on social media. Here's a guy who was a devout liberal for a long, long time and admitted that he was part of it. You know, the Charlottesville lie, he admitted he was wrong on and, and the whole thing here lately. And I just wonder how many people out there on the left are going through that right now saying, I don't care. The personality thing, I don't even care about that anymore. I don't even have a Twitter account anymore. I probably won't see most of it anymore. I know how to turn the news off. I know one thing for sure, that leading up to COVID during the Trump presidency, my life was better. And those are the things that that you have to measure. What do we need done? We need the spending power of American families restored. We need the border secured. And we need confidence in our allies and fear in the hearts of our enemies again. Autonomous individuals in unison. Gary McNamara and Eric Harley on Red Eye Radio. It's Red Eye Radio. He's Eric Harley and I'm Gary McNamara. So uh, ICE, uh, Immigration and Customs Enforcement, on Sunday confirmed that the Venezuelan national charged in connection with the murder of a 22-year-old Georgia nursing student entered the United States illegally in 2022 had previously been arrested in New York City. Fox News had previously reported that uh, Jose Ibera charged with the murder of uh, Lake and Riley on mm. the University of Georgia campus had crossed into the U.S. illegally near El Paso in September of 2022 and was paroled into the United States. In a statement to Fox News Digital, ICE confirmed he had been encountered by Customs and Border Protection on September 8th, 2022, after entering El Paso and was paroled and released for further processing. ICE also confirmed that he had been arrested by the New York Police Department a year later on September 14th, 2023, and charged with acting in a manner to injure a child less than 17 years of age and a motor vehicle license violation. Uh, when ICE learns what it believes to be a removable illegal immigrant, uh, when ICE learns that what is believed to be a removable illegal immigrant has been arrested on criminal charges, the agency will normally lodge a detainer or request asking law enforcement to keep the suspect in custody until they can be transferred to ICE and put into deportation hearings. In this case, however, ICE's statement that Ibera was released before a detainer could be issued. New York City is also a sanctuary city, which generally restricts law enforcement from complying with ICE detainers. Hmm. Wow. There was a detainer for the murder charge, though. Hmm. Just amazing. Just, I mean, you just, you just shake your head. You go, what the hell? You know, it's just, it's, it's just so insane. And when I heard the excuse the other day, well, you know, illegal, uh, illegal immigrants uh, uh, by, you know, per capita, don't commit as many crimes as American citizens as if that justifies. And that's why I gave the analogy. Yeah, I live in an apartment. My two roommates are ripping me off. Uh, you know, the, we kept the door open. We never locked the door and somebody came in uh, and robbed me too. Well, we should lock the door. Well, no, because a greater percentage of the people that live with you ripped you off. Mm -hmm. What a dumb argument. Yeah. It's it is the insanity and the defiant left um, trying to excuse this whole situation away. And the fact of the matter is the American people are done with it. You can't do anything anymore because nothing is in the abstract anymore. If you're on the left, 
There is no way to defend any of this. With us, there's never been a way to defend it. But they certainly made the effort over the years, and now the effort is failing over and over and over again as their defiance, you know, is basically a slap, another slap in the face to the American people who just want to feel more secure. National security. It's the number one role of the American government. That includes sealing the borders. That includes making sure we know who's coming in. That those people are properly vetted. And the left doesn't believe in that. Sanctuary space. Hey, New York, Chicago, L.A., how's that working out for you? This is the world they created. Defund the police. A few years later, why is all this crime on the rise? This is the world you created. Yeah. It, it's nuts. We can stop it. All of this was a choice by your side. And you can stop it if you really want to. Or do you want to be more compassionate? Maybe if you just talk them out of murders and robberies and violent crime. Maybe, just maybe, you'll change their hearts. Or maybe it will continue to increase and put your family in danger even further. Or maybe you'll just have to decide quietly, yeah, we got to leave. We got to get out of this neighborhood. We got to get out of this town. We got to get out of this state. That the economy isn't the only thing driving people to other states from California and New York. It is that feeling of I can't protect myself. They're giving, they're letting violent criminals go with no bail brag in New York. By the way, I loved, we never, I don't think we ever touched on this, but Hochul's reaction. Well, I needed, I would like to have a conversation with uh, D.A. Bragg on this about, you know, how that was all handled and blah, 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 trying to soft walk this. No, you know how it went down. You know who the guy is. You know why he let them go. And then you tell people they can't defend themselves in their own home. Bye. Buy. The billionaires all have private security. They've always been able to defend themselves, and they also have the ability to get up and go when and wherever they want. And they have their armed security. And and now their gated communities. And now they have middle class individuals, as we have said, that have reached the point of not being able to afford to stay, not just when it comes to the economy. Not just being underwater more and more and more as the cost of living goes through the roof, California, but also the fact that they can't protect themselves and their family. They don't, they don't feel secure. The number of liberals who have talked about it openly. Now, they're moving to Austin, a very lib- liberal hub of our state of Texas. But they're actually talking about they love the fact That if they choose to own a gun, they can own one, and the state's not going to come after them for doing it. They want to feel protected. It's not just about gun rights. It's about living in a place where the leaders say, we're going to do our job, which is to protect you the best we can. And we're going to follow the very fundamental methodologies of law enforcement because we're a nation of laws and you're going to feel secure here and as such you're going to be able to thrive here because also we're economically going to nurture that environment as well. Saw another article over the weekend the $20 an hour for fast food workers in California and 
I think it was Business Insider. I'll have to get it. But it said families are just very open about it. We're buying groceries now. Fast food's not the cheap option anymore. Groceries are. And that's just the way we'll have to do it. You're going to see, it will be interesting to see how many fast food locations and small restaurants. I, I don't want this to happen, but it is inevitable. Attrition is going to kill them because there's really no no way around it. People aren't going to just magically find the money to keep buying the things they were buying in, at fast food places. And if you start seeing attrition on top of companies closing their doors because they don't feel safe in those neighborhoods, they know their employees aren't safe in those neighborhoods, and they just don't want to be there anymore, they can't, they can't afford to stay because it's a bad business move to stay, then you're going to see even further mass exodus from states like California. Just wait for it. And and New York, too. You know, when you, we, we talk about the situation in New York, you mentioned Bragg and, uh, and then the, the whole going after, uh, you know, Trump with the civil law, mm-hmm. which is just asinine. And by the way, I see more of that every day where people are picking up on this going, could I be prosecuted exactly. for listing my exactly. – this one, for listing my house yep. Yep. Right. for $600,000 right. and somebody only – and the official purchase price is $500,000? Right. right. Could I be charged with fraud because I made it clear to them this is what my house is worth? Yeah. Think about and, that. And it was, I'm amazed the number of people asking those questions now in New York. What exactly? And, and the response is, no, it can't happen to you because you're not Trump. It's like, well, then, then you're making up a law to prosecute him. Well, you had uh, over uh, late last week, uh, it was some nationwide real estate investors like Cardone's Capital, Grant Cardone, has started telling their teams to pack their bags and leave New York. After the verdict in former President Trump's fraud fraud trial, Mm -hmm. quote, we thought this year was the opportunity to come into Chicago, California and New York City. I've been waiting for 40 years now to invest in that marketplace. I was completely confident that this was a year to come. Gardon told Steve Ducey on Fox and Friends last Wednesday. And when that ruling happened, it was like pencils down. Don't touch it. Don't go there. Wow. The um, business leader gained recent recognition after he posted on X that his firm would immediately discontinue all underwriting in New York City real estate and focus on other markets like <laughs> like mm-hmm. Texas and Florida. Mm-hmm. He further said New York has risks that outweigh now the opportunities in terms of property value and that the blue state has shown its uh, politics, it's all politics when it comes to doing business. We invest for 14,000 investors that depend on cash flow. And if I can't predict the cash flow because of some ruling or because of the migrants or because I can't evict people, New York City just keeps doing every single thing they can to sell real estate in Florida, not stel- sell real estate in New York, the fund manager said. Hmm. So it's across the board. It's everything. Additional it additional financial concerns exist in New York for pension funds, lenders, and public real estate investment trusts following the civil implications of the three hundred it's or four hundred and fifty million dollar now Trump ruling, potentially causing a decline in property value and an increase in loan defaults that could roll over to regional banks. They don't care. There is no self-awareness. They deal on emotion and arrogance. Yeah. Emotion, arrogance, and bull. Mm -hmm. Yep. But there there it is. The tweet sent out immediately to his entire team. Immediately discontinue all underwriting in New York City real estate. The risks outweigh the opportunity at this time. I haven't seen the leftist media get on anybody who is really a major real estate person in New York City who comes out and says, no, there's no problem at all with this. Hmm. They're not saying that, are they? No. No. No, I mean, 
they'll be scrambling because once that tipping point is reached, what do you do? But on everything, as you mentioned, I mean, it's on every front. And the reason is, is because on every front, it is especially disconcerting. Your entire life is spent, especially if you're a parent, but for anybody, you're looking to feed yourself and house yourself and have that security. Put a roof over your head and food on your table. Well, your spending power is being depleted by the day. And a roof over your your head in a neighborhood that is more and more unsafe because of the whole defund the police fallout and the open border. So more and more you feel unsafe in your own home and you're struggling to make ends meet. That is the reality. This isn't the slippery slope of where it's going. It's here. 86690-RED-EYE. Coming up, more with Gary McNamara and Eric Harley. It's Red Eye Radio. It's Red Eye Radio. He is Eric Harley, and uh, I'm Gary McNamara. Well, if you like uh, Taylor Swift, Mm -hmm. you may be slightly racist. Well, we'll get to that in a moment. Uh, Bob Costas going after Trump supporters. Mm -hmm. You know, I've often said, uh, you know, Bob Costas is to me always like, oh, I can't remember that actor's name. Mm -hmm. Oh, I got mine blank here. I'll have it up to the top of the hour. I just mm-hmm. uh, George Clooney. Mm. He's much like I never forget George Clooney on on uh, uh, Charlie Rose one time, mm-hmm. and I'm sitting there going, because of the way he looks, his style, his manner of speech, mm-hmm. you get the impression he's intelligent. Yeah, but then when you listen to the con- the content that comes out of his mouth, yeah, he's not. Same with <laughs> Costas coming up. This is Red Eye Radio on Westwood One. Now, it's Red Eye Radio. Gary McNamara and Eric Harley talk about everything from politics to social issues and news of the day. Whether you're up late or you're just starting your day, welcome to the show from the Uniden America Studios. This is Red Eye Radio. All across America and around the planet, we are Red Eye Radio. Welcome and good morning. He's Eric Carley and I'm Gary McNamara. All right, so I'm reading the quote from Bob Costas. Some of the quotes when he was on CNN on Friday. About Trump, he is by far the most disgraceful figure in modern presidential history. He's only become more disgraceful since 2016 and since 2020. He has a bubbling cauldron of loathsome traits, uh, Costa said of, of Trump. You have to be, quote, you have to be in the throes of some sort of toxic delusion in a toxic cult to believe that Donald Trump has ever been in any sense emotionally, psychologically, intellectually, or ethically fit to be president of the United States, but his supporters are locked in on that. All right, so that's what he had to say mm. about uh, uh Trump about Biden. Uh, He said the Trump delusion is not going away on the right, but sane Democrats have to offer a compelling alternative. Biden, for all that he has accomplished Mm. and all of his basic decency, is not a compelling figure any longer. Mm -hmm. You know, as we've stated before, or I've said many times before, um, yeah, I haven't seen Costas in a while. He's he's looking a little older, as we all are. Okay, that's I'm I'm not basing 
my argument against Costas on looks. Now I just saw I just, when I was looked at a still picture of him on there. I went, oh, he's gotten old. Yeah, uh, I don't look at mirrors or pictures mm-hmm. of myself, but I'll tell you, I don't look any older. <laughs> Uh, I've always thought, you know, that uh, that that cost us. Remember the gun control rants he was on. Remember that. Remember those. <laughs> yeah. Did he do climate change too? You mean by broadcasting in a stew with a uh, studio with only candles at a halftime show? Was that him? Yeah. Oh, okay, I couldn't remember if it was him or not. Uh, and you know, he's always been to me. By the he, way, candles kill the planet. I, I don't think they actually had candles. It just it worked in the joke. He he uh, he, I, and I said earlier, he always reminds me of George Clooney. Uh-huh. They've got this style where they sit down and they're relaxed, and they they, I think they they wish to come across as intellectuals. Mm. But he said nothing there about the issues whatsoever. How do I view? If you're going to say, do I believe that you know you have eccentric people out there that will in speeches will say things, Trump will say things, uh, every politician will say things, you'll go, huh? But that's only speeches. Mm. And you've often said it. The biggest failure of Trump during his administration was his own mouth. Well, what they had on him was what they had his on words. Him, yeah, yeah, what they had, yeah, what the they have on him is his, the words, you know, not really anything else. Mm-hmm. We see what has happened. We've seen... You know, Republicans have seen, for example, the collusion of wanting to censor the American public, the truth, Mm -hmm. which comes from Democrats. We've seen that. We've seen what happened with the with the 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 laptop. We've seen what happened with Russia collusion. Somewhere in there, the media knew that was completely false. They had their sources that knew there was no evidence against Biden Mm -hmm. against uh, Trump. Mm -hmm. in Russia collusion. They knew that. And we've seen it was all a setup by the Hillary Clinton campaign. Uh, Trump at times does not do himself a service by some of the rhetoric that he spews. He makes himself an easy target by his rhetoric. But Mm -hmm. where he stands on the actual issues compared about the Democrats, as we have said, the Democrats on the issues are insane. Trump on the issues for whatever differences we may have uh, when he promotes something. We're going, no, we believe that's wrong, that's wrong, that's Mm -hmm. wrong. Mm -hmm. Overall, on the issues, he's a complete moderate. On immigration, he's a moderate that wishes to enforce current U.S. law that was passed over the last 40 years by Republicans and Democrats. Mm Mm-hmm where Democrats sounded just like Trump 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. They're the ones that moved. He didn't move. But I've always thought that Costas reminds me of a George Clooney. They sit back and, well, here's how I think. But And so you look at it and you go, okay, their style, their style is like, okay, I know what I'm talking about. Mm Mm-hmm. You know, there's uh, the way that they look there. I remember uh, uh, with um, what's his name with uh, with Charlie Rose. Yeah. Clooney. Clooney with Charlie Rose at one time. And I'm like, wow, it's such a, you know, soft and relaxed conversation. But when he attacks Republicans or when he defends himself, there is really no substance to it. It's all the imagery that I know what I'm talking about and none of the substance that I know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. And that's what I get from Costas. And have him have uh, for for uh, quite a long time. Mm-hmm. He also, and even though his hair is different, Costas has always reminded me a little bit of Gavin Newsom with his the way that just his style. Mm-hmm. And you and I, you know, I won't say I'll speak for you, but I always thought that Democrats and independents would embrace Newsom more than they ever have, I mean, in the country right now. And when you see the polling uh, that came out last week that shows that he fares the worst against against a Trump when Gavin... And I went, okay, people are... Even behind Kamala Harris, for those that don't know. Yes, yes. 
and, and and I thought, wow, okay, people aren't buying the image anymore. Right. Image was able to sell a lot mm-hmm. in this country, and now image doesn't sell. It's the reality of for Newsom, <laughs> California. Sorry, we don't wish to be California. Yeah, we don't wish right. to be a California under Gavin Newsom. Yeah. And so, as we've said across the board, you can go point by point on the issues, but for uh, Costas to say, if Costas said, look, Trump is just too radical in his rhetoric. I know he's moderate, but I'd rather have a Democrat that's, you know, a Democrat that has, you know, that is more, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, fiscally conservative mm. and more socially liberal. And, and I just think he's too old and we need somebody else in there. You know, I, I could buy it. Right. I mean, I wouldn't accept it, but I'd at least say, okay, the guy's, you know, the guy's really saying what, you know, what is more to his truth as a Democrat, Mm. that in order to win, we need to do this. And the negative for Trump is the rhetoric. Right. But if I was a Democrat, like Costas, what I would say is, well, I'd say whether I was a Democrat or a Republican, Trump is right on the issues. That's why the people like him. We're completely wrong on the issues. We cannot continue to go and tell the people the border is secure and there's no problem. Right. We can't do that. Right. We can't continue to tell people that we can run the grid on solar and wind. That's ridiculous. It's impossible to do. That in itself is insanity to do something like that. We cannot have all EVs. Ooh, we'll get to that. You saw where Mercedes Mercedes Benz says uh, no more full EVs. Hybrids, may, yeah, but mm-hmm. EVs, not going to do it anymore. The market conditions, people don't want them. You know, we we as a Democratic Party have to stop with the identity politics. We have to stop judging people. If he truly looked at the issues of where Republicans and Democrats stood, but said, still, I remain a Democrat because, or I remain a Democrat because I, I'm i more liberal socially. Yeah. I could, I wouldn't agree with it, but I could accept that as a legitimate opinion. Him just broad brushing it and saying basically all Trump supporters and Trump is basically a uh, is a is is a cult is number one wrong. It's mm-hmm, ridiculous. Mm-hmm. It shows he doesn't have a clue as to the mindset of the nation uh, right now, and it again uh, it proves our point that we have said there seems to be no self awareness from the left at all. No self-awareness of where the country is and where their own party is. It's simply Trump derangement syndrome. Yeah, right. Yeah. Um, And they have to throw it out. I mean, what you hear from Costas here is just that. He, He wants to tell you that Trump is highly unqualified but when you throw out the name trump and look at the years while he was president leading up to covid what do you see anything that was in the news from the left was about a controversy and many of those were made up Mm -hmm. think about that charlottesville made up the russian hoax made up All of these major newsmakers during his first term. And it won't be this way during his sixth term. It won't. It. Oh, insurrection that he led an insurrection. Insurrection. That was a lie. So if you talk about what happened on January 6th, then we can talk about a his involvement. And we criticized him. Everybody criticized him. In fact, his own team criticized him for his uh, his initial response, which is why he issued his second response. But the left had to create things. They had to make things up. Both impeachments. Yeah. You yep. think about everything the left threw at him. All of it was based on untruths, with the exception of the stuff that he was saying. You know, the thing I heard Costas when he said, you know, he's a man of decency. Look at the public. Look at even Democrats. Mm-hmm. They understand. The public believes that Biden has enriched himself in public service. Right. Through influence peddling in one manner or another. And he's lied repeatedly. Right. I don't know how many times he's 
you know, he's got, uh, what was it, bottomless Pinocchios? Yeah. From the Washington Post. Right. And so that's the problem is you, you don't see, you don't see a, a uh, maybe a, an old-time liberal like Costas saying, well, we've gone too far here and gone too far, but at least we stand here and the Democratic Party needs to find this. You know, he's simply saying Trump is a lunatic. Biden is a decent person who is just old. Biden is not decent. No. A decent person does not lie to the country that he is commander in chief of, of what the generals told him we should do in Afghanistan. Right. You don't lie about that. No. You don't consistently make up stories over and the same stories over and over and over again that are lies because his team is telling you nothing is wrong with him. Right. So if nothing is wrong with him and it's not cognitive, he's a horrible man. Right. For making these lies up over and over again. Right. Right. But there's no other way around it. But one of the things that makes me happy is that Co- that not Costas, but, uh, you know, somebody that has been good at BSing people and thinks they are good at BSing people. And I think, you know, if I mentioned George Clooney before. He hasn't been around for the longest time. But mm-hmm. this goes back to an interview I saw him do probably 12, 13 years ago. And that's always remained in my mind. I go, OK, Democrats are looking for somebody who looks like they're the relaxed, kind of intelligent person who throws out tons of BS at you. Costas has reminded me of that. Then Gavin Newsom doing the exact same thing. And the fact that he's Gavin Newsom is being rejected nationwide shows people don't care what you look like anymore or the style that you present them. Is it crap coming out of your mouth or not? Right. Yep. I mean, that's it. It's, it's about what you're saying, not how you're saying it. So. You get away with that in sports television, but in the arena of public ideas, you're going to be shredded for your nothingness. By the way, doesn't bottomless Pinocchios sound like a live stage show that Bobert and her boyfriend would have front row tickets to? I'm just asking questions. I'm not saying what, whether they would or not. I'm just well, asking, I doesn't it kind of sound like I, that? I, I know they're on break, but I haven't <laughs> seen her in the last couple of weeks since I've seen the story that she says she's trying to have a much more serious right. image now and not yeah. be caught in any of these things. And Because mm-hmm. now's and, the time to do that. And you and I are looking at each other going, <laughs> it's a little bit too late to be saying exactly. that. 866-90-RED-EYE. Brought to you by Hotshot Secret. Hi, I'm Jen Loomis, a transport safety expert at J.J. Keller. And I'm here to share a tip on speed and space management. In order to manage speed, you need to understand the four factors involved in stopping a vehicle. Perception distance is the distance a vehicle travels from the time you see a hazard until your brain recognizes it. The perception time for an alert driver is approximately three-fourths of a second. Reaction distance is the distance a vehicle travels from the time your brain tells your foot to move from the accelerator until your foot hits the brake pedal. The average driver has a reaction time of three-fourths of a second. Brake lag distance also needs to be taken into account. When operating a vehicle with air brakes, it takes about half a second for the mechanical operation to take place. Finally, braking distance is the distance it takes a vehicle to stop once the brakes are applied. Braking distance is affected by the weight, length, and speed of the vehicle, as well as road condition. This tip was brought to you by J.J. Keller and Associates. Visit us at jjkeller.com. Lines open for your calls. 866-90-RED-EYE on Red Eye Radio. It's Red Eye Radio. He's our Carly and I'm Gary McNamara. I like this headline. Professor says it feels slightly racist to be a Taylor Swift fan. A California professor who was no stranger to controversial opinions speculated that it might be racist to be a Taylor Swift fan. Why do I feel like it's slightly racist to be a Taylor Swift fan? Uh, Melina Abdullah posted on X. On Super Bowl Sunday, Abdullah, professor of Pan American Studies at Cal State University, is a self-described Black Lives Matter organizer, Pan-Africanist, hip-hop scholar, 
daughter of God, a womanist, and truth teller, truth teller mama, according to her post on X. Hmm. Yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's when, a lot to put on a business card. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to get you a, a real job, but uh, when one user asked her to elaborate on her opinion, she replied, I said, feel, not think. Kind of like that feeling I get when there are too many American flags. What's too many American flags? Yeah, what do you mean feeling? You yeah. either think it is or you, you think it's not. It's a yes or no. What do I mean feel? Oh, it feels like. It feels like. No, you're trying to soft sell your opinion. You in don't the, have to. In the same post, someone commented that literally everything is racist. Abdullah replied, indeed. Yeah. And by the way, what is slightly racist? A few hours later, she followed up on another post on X after the Kansas City Chiefs had won the game. Why do I feel like this was some right-wing white supremacist conspiracy? Boo, Super Bowl. Wow. Folks think that folks think they're attacking me by asking why I think everything is racist. I'm not offended. Virtually everything is racist. In their minds it is. No, that's clearly Inclu- how she including themselves, which is mm-hmm. why they judge people by groups and right. not individuals. I find right. it interesting that the people that promote that society is a racist doesn't think they don't think it's them, mm-hmm. yet they're the ones that are promoting the racism of not judging each and every person as an individual. Right. Because why? All white people are racist. Yeah. Wow. Fox News Digital reached out to Abdullah for additional comments. So far, none. The story will be updated with any reply. Hmm. Uh, She had previously shared opinions on Twitter in 2022. She told white people they weren't welcome to Juneteenth celebrations. Wow. Okay. Attention, white people. Please don't ask if you can come to the cookout. Wow. Wow. Juneteenth is Freedom Day for black people. Okay. Like I said, the ones that are screaming racist are the most racist. You're listening to Red Eye Radio from the Uniden America Studios. And he's Eric Carly, and I'm Gary McNamara. Well, I saw this breaking news. I went to the New York Post just scanning headlines, as we always do, and during the, even during the show. And I went, breaking news. What's this breaking news? Oh, well, here's one. Breaking news with Jerry Seinfeld in it. Ant- yeah. Anti-Israel protesters berate. Jerry Seinfeld as he leaves New York City event. The smiling Jerry Seinfeld waved off anti-Israel protesters. Excuse me. I guess that's one way to put anti-Israel. Pro-Hamas protesters. Mm -hmm. Pro-terrorism protesters who accuse him of supporting genocide as he exited an event at the upper uh, uh, on the on the Upper East Side Sunday night, according to footage. Remember, didn't Kramer say at one point that they all should just move to the east side, I think? (laughs) The New York City councilman was heckled. Excuse me. The New York City comedian was heckled after he left an event. Yeah, what did I miss? (laughs) At the 92nd Street Y in Manhattan that featured former New York Times columnist and founder of the free press, Barry Weiss. All right. Oh, the fact that he just went there had to drive them crazy. Yeah. Genocide supporter, you support genocide, one protester yelled at Seinfeld, who gave a quick wave before getting back into the back seat of a black SUV that was surrounded by NYPD officers, according to footage obtained by the Post. See, I did the same thing. I chuckled like you did because you can see them screaming at him. Yeah, 
hey, hey, hey. And Jerry with that smile going, hello. Okay. Okay. Smile and wave. All hello. right. Okay. Hello. Good to see you. Good and keep in you. mind, it was years ago. I want to say it was 2012. Jerry Seinfeld was one of the first major comedians to say, I can't play the university campuses anymore because the protesters have just gotten ridiculous and I'm not going to do that. And if you think about, you know, where we are now, where universities are, where the radical left is now, but he was because, I mean, I don't know like the circuit in, in terms of universities, I know in terms of overall entertainment, you know, you have bands and, you know, who knows, long list of speakers, including celebrity speakers. But in terms of stand up, I don't know how I'm guessing that's that's a thing. I mean, I, I or was. But he was one of the first to basically say, yeah, I'm done. I can't do that anymore. The protesters continued to shout at Seinfeld before the SUV pulled away. Uh, you know, basically the F word. Mm. You support genocide. Uh, the demonstrator seethed. I like that. Mm -hmm. The small crowd of protesters rallied outside the community center that was hosting Weiss. Protesters were critical of Weiss, strong supporter of Israel, and tried to connect her debt to the debt of a Palestinian professor who had said... Uh, that if uh, he gets killed, blame Barry Weiss. Yeah. Because she criticized him for a joke, you know, for his tweets that he was putting out. His pro, his pro terrorism tweets. Yeah. She criticized. Yeah. Uh, meanwhile, Michael Richards, seen coming out of an NAACP awards show. I'm kidding. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, that wasn't happening. But, you know, no. the. Um, the interesting thing uh, to watch there is the radical left, these pro-Hamas, pro-terrorist, truly pro-genocide individuals mm -hmm. on the left. Watching them embrace their anti-Semitism, which clearly has been there for a long, long time, but now they're proud of it. And promoting it as a part of their protests. Actually, if that's how they feel and have always felt, this is exactly how it should play out. We should know who they are. Oh, yeah. And yeah. watching this play out, if you weren't paying attention before, it's got your attention now. I don't know how many people, anecdotally, but I don't know how many people in my life since October 7th have come to me and said, Oh my gosh. And I'm like, well, yeah, I mean, it's something I've known and seen for years, but yeah, the anti-Semitism and they're proudly promoting it. Mm -hmm. That's who they are. And people learning that, or at least, I guess, realizing that it's true for the first time is always interesting to watch, too. But I'm glad more people see it. I'm glad they're not hiding it. I don't want that kind of bigotry and hatred to be hidden. I'm glad it's on the surface. I'm glad they that they believe that it's worth putting on their protest signs because the entire world needs to see that kind of bigotry and hatred and see where it lives. You know, you, have, you and I have said this for years that we're, uh, we think it's beneficial that the Democratic Party has become much more open on the things that they truly believe. Mm -hmm. Because as we've stated before, they were always trying to pretend that they were in the middle and they weren't. Right. And right. how radical they are is important for people to you know, to understand, you know, when you have 99% of the Democrats voting to have men compete against women in sports, uh, when you have 99% of Democrats promoting the ideology that if you're a male, 
and you say so, you become a biological female. Mm-hmm. To have them on the record promoting that, as they did with the Equity Act, is just, it, to me, it's mind-boggling when you see it, but at least they're being honest and and the American people can look at it and say, that's nuts. They yeah. actually believe this? Right. Well, remember when the left would pretend like they cared about anti-Semitism and wanted to stop it? Remember that? They would, you know, often say, well, that's wrong. That's wrong. That's wrong. And But you could see how they actually felt. You could see right through it. And now the facade is completely gone. I've been saying it since October 7th, and it it just I'm I'm confirmed every single day. After October 7th, if you didn't learn it by then, certainly. Now it's very clear there's the radicals and on the other side, everyone else. And you have to decide which side you're on. You act like a radical, talk like a radical, vote like a radical, you own it. You're part of it. And it's not hard to break down. No, it isn't. It isn't. You know, to oh, did you see to the uh, report came out from the Israelis hmm. on the uh you know, the murderous violent sex crimes that took place. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Reading through that, mm-hmm. yeah. Reading through that will make can make you sick. That's how bad that is from what happened on October seventh. You know, and we, we had we had talked about that before. Some of the things yeah. that come out that we had that we had read. Well, the, watching the most, that theater full of journalists as they were shown, yeah, things that Hamas mm-hmm. themselves recorded. Yep. And the shock on their face. And, and I, I do believe, by the way, to some extent, there are some, and I don't, I can't quantify it, but there are some people that just refuse to believe that there's that kind of evil in the world. And so they go in and then they try and say, oh, it's all false. It's all false. And it's easier for them to say Israel is the bad guy. I, I, I don't believe it's anywhere close to the majority. I think it's a few, relatively speaking. Because their mind can't possibly comprehend those heinous acts and they can't compartmentalize that kind of evil and, and, and come to the reality or deal with the reality that it does exist in the world. Again, it's only a few. And it is shocking to read about, to learn about. And it's why, exactly why, it must be stopped and prevented from ever happening again. There's no way around that. Hamas must be fully eliminated, period. Mm -hmm. No middle ground. You know, this talk about a ceasefire over the weekend. Israel's not going to stop going after Hamas. Because you can't. Well, the ceasefire is being negotiated by Israel, mm-hmm. which would be what? Uh, a number of weeks mm-hmm. of a ceasefire for mm-hmm. release of 40 hostages. Mm-hmm. So that's Israel doing mm-hmm. that negotiation. But even if they, yes, I know. But even if they got to the point of a longer ceasefire, Israel is still going to target Hamas. I agree with you on that, yes. It may not be the, um, I guess, same kind of newsmaker uh, that that recent actions have been by israel they may go about it in a different way keep in mind israel isn't you know they're they're not like the u.s and and the u.s often feels you know the need to have reporters embedded and you know that can be very important by the way uh to tell us what's going on we we think of richard engel remember uh after one of the state of the unions by obama uh when when obama said something to the effect that the enemy was on the run and Richard Engel, not a conservative by any stretch, NBC reporter who's been embedded, I don't know how many times. I mean, I don't know overall, collectively, how many years he's been, you know, in the trenches in war as a a reporter and came back after the State of the Union and said, and I think his his appearance was on MSNBC when he said it. I 
I believe, and if I remember correctly. And he said, I don't know where he gets his information, but I'm talking to the men who are in charge of the boots on the ground, and that's not the case. Well, he li- obviously Obama of course, lied. Of course. And that's why it is important, you know, to, to have uh, journalists embedded, but Israel's take on it has been all along, we're going to do what we do, and we're going to have, and we fight, we have to fight the way we have to fight, and we give, we want all people who are innocent and not part of Hamas out of the way and give them plenty of room, but once we come in, and I think they have been clear, you know, um, that they are, look, there is going to be, there are going to be casualties, which is why we want to give everybody a heads up and plenty of time to get out of the way. But I do believe wherever this is headed, Israel will work to no end to defeat Hamas because there's no way around it. You have to do that. Otherwise, you sit there and you just wait for them to commit an even greater heinous act or set of acts on your people. You're just waiting for them. It's not a matter of if, it's when. I think Seinfeld is pretty, uh, you know, in this whole incident here, I think he's, Seinfeld to me seems like he's pretty self-aware. I think he knew this yeah. possibility oh, yeah. would happen if he went to a Barry Weiss well, event. And, and it's also happened to him. It, it was, uh, what, three or four weeks yeah, ago, maybe yep, longer, yep, yep, at another already. event. Yep. I, I don't know if that was a, poli- I can't remember if it was a political event or a stand-up event, but he was there and then they were protesting and they, you know, he was... So, yeah, he's he's well aware of it, and you're right. For him to go to make the choice, knowing that that was likely going to be the case, to be there, that tells you how important that was to him, and that's interesting. 866-90-RED-EYE. Get in touch with Red Eye Radio, toll free at 866-90-RED-EYE. It's Red Eye Radio. He is Eric Cronin. I'm Gary McNamara. Uh, reading this here from Bloomberg. Uh, this uh, came out on Sunday. Fed favored inflation gauge seen rising most in a year. Underlying U.S. inflation probably rose in January by the most in a year as tracked by the Fed Reserve's preferred metric, highlighting the long and bumpy path to taming price pressures. The core personal consumption expenditures price index Ooh, so mouthful, mm. which excludes food and energy costs, is seen rising 0.4% from a month earlier. That would mark the second straight month acceleration in that gauge uh, that largely has been receding over uh, the last two years. Fed officials have stressed they are in no rush to lower borrowing costs and will only do so once they're confident that inflation is retreating on a sustained basis. But uh, that's the stuff that they look at right now. Uh, the the Fed at least and goes uh oh yeah you know we may not have tamed this uh, at all you know it's I was talking to my father I had my I got my headset on yesterday when I'm in the supermarket and I finish in the self service lane and it's eighty seven dollars first thing out of my mouth to my dad I'm talking to my dad I go dad I just went to the supermarket it's under a hundred dollars yeah it's top of mind to everyone wow. How did you like that soda that you bought? (laughs) This is Red Eye Radio on Westwood One.